Um, all right, let's talk about Purdue. They've lost two of their last three. One was by five points on the road at Indiana. One was by six points on the road at Northwestern. It feels a little bit like there is now a blueprint for how to beat them. Uh, part of it is kind of doubling Edie hard, which is what Northwestern did. Part of it is kind of pressuring up on those guards, getting those freshman guards uncomfortable, which is what Rutgers did. Uh, some of it is all of the above, which is what Indiana did. Tyler, how are you concerned about this Purdue group? Big picture, or is this just, you know, life on the road in the Big Ten? Is It's going to happen eventually. I, you know, Purdue, I've been very consistent saying Purdue's a very good team. I've been a big but – I think I think Edie's the best player in college this year. He's playing unbelievable. And they have some young kids who've really come along. And I was kind of waiting for them to take some L's a little bit. I thought they might start – the wheels might start to rattle a little bit just because of how the young the kids are. Uh, but, you know, when I look at the game, uh, you know, Northwestern plays – very hard defensively. First of all, they forced them to shoot 36% from the field. Purdue had 16 turnovers. I think Edie had six of them. So it, it wasn't like they showed up and played their best game. Northwestern was pretty hungry. They can get out and defend and run. Uh, so, yeah, this isn't a total shock to me. Welsh Ryan Arena is an electric factory, first, of all, first and foremost. <laughs> That's the first time it has ever been said. It's an electric factory. Ask Kevin Sweeney. I've never heard of a person more proud than our boy Sweeney. Uh, well, I, I can't remember if it was me, you, and Fanter. It was on this show last week where we were talking about potential teams that could beat Purdue. And I, I think it was on. I think it was on our podcast, DTF, shameless plug, that uh, it, good guards and good defensive guards can get up and pressure those young players. Boo Boo is a dude. Like Jace Audige is a dude, like the two of the best, toughest, rugged one and two combos in the Big Ten. And I, I say that without any hesitancy, like those guys are really good. And when you can push those guards a little bit further out, make them uncomfortable, make them initiate offense from two dribbles further out, it makes it harder for them to enter the ball into Zach Eady. And then whenever they are, they're making longer passes so those rotations can get there faster. So not only are they doubling Edie, but they're getting there a half step quicker to double him because those guards are being pressured out. That's what happened against Rutgers too. So th th that's one of the things that you pressure those guards, you force them out, you make those passes a little bit longer, three, four feet. It changes the dynamic of how Edie can attack you because he's not getting as deep and the double's coming quicker and you're making him make decisions uh, a split second faster. I think that's the biggest difference. Yep. And Northwestern's so, good. Northwestern's yes, good. North, Northwestern is good. They've won three in a row now. They've won six of their last eight. They are currently sitting at 18 and seven overall. They are nine and five in the Big Ten. That is uh, a tie for second place. As crazy as it sounds, they're in second place in the Big Ten. Michigan, who is sitting in ninth place, in the Big Ten is one game out of second place. It's a chicken pot pie in the middle of that Big Ten, to quote uh, one Terrence Oglesby. But Northwestern right now, they are a seven seed. If the tournament started today, not only would they be in the tournament, but they would be uh, probably favored in the first round, according to our field of uh, fielding the 68 bracketologist. We're dropping our merch. We got to start calling Underwood Daddy Brad. I'm a big yeah. odd guy.